Hi everyone, this is Gail Dudley. Thank you for joining me. This is At the Table with Gail and I am your host, Gail Dudley. This is something new that I decided to do every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. as the schedule will allow. I'm so excited to be with you this morning just to share a few things with you. And today's topic, we are going to talk about how long can we stay silent? How long? How long, people, can we stay silent? Um, let me just jump right in here and say At the Table with Gail has been around for several years. We've been finding our footstep along the way, and now we have our groove. The month of September, every year, I go back through everything that I have been doing, and I do some evaluation as to what is working well, what isn't working, what do I need to cut off, what do I need to let go, what do I need to lay aside until another date. I'm always looking at ways to continue everything that I need to be doing at this particular season and time. My heart is politics. I love, love, love politics. And I'm going to talk about a few things when it comes to politics during this time that we share together this morning. The other thing is that I am a believer of Jesus Christ. I am a Christian female. I am a Christian female entrepreneur. I am a Christian woman, wife, and mother. I never want to hide or discount who I am. That is, in fact, who I am. I want to give you a few um, hashtags today if you want to send out anything. Uh, my Twitter account is at Gail Dudley, and that is G-A-I-L-D-U-D-L-E-Y. And the hashtag for today is hashtag politically savvy. So anything you send out today in reference to this video, I will be posting on my blog a little bit later. And the blog address is www.gaildudley.wordpress.com. And that is G-A-I-L-D-U-D-L-E-Y.com. So gaildudley.wordpress.com. And if you ever want to check out my website, it is www.gaildudley.com. Again, that's G-A-I-L-D-U-D-L-E-Y.com. I want to talk today about how long can we stay silent? How long can we stay silent? I cannot help but look around and see the growing division. We've been divided as a country here in the United States of America for a little while now, but it is growing more and more divided. I think about the eight-year-old um, who was um, pushed off of a table after a, a rope has been placed around his neck, a biracial eight-year-old little boy. I cannot get that image out of my face now that I have seen some of the images. I think about the teens that even did this horrific act. Um, I can't judge or one place or another, but I'm going to say it. It is a horrific act and something needs to be done about it. So I think about the little boy. I think about the NFL boycott. And it's all because of Colin took a knee last year during the national anthem. Agree or disagree, he, he, um, he silently gave his protest in his way. I understand I'm not going to get into what one should do or what one should not do, but I'm now focused on the NFL boycott that people are talking about. I also think about right here in Columbus, Ohio, a man was brutally beaten by several officers of the Columbus uh, Police Department here in Columbus, Ohio. And I can't seem to shake that as well. But growing concerns, when I go through my Facebook feed, when I'm going through my Twitter feed, I'm seeing all of this outrage. And I said, what can I do? And how long can we stay silent on issues that matter? A quote, a Martin Luther King Jr. quote that I want to share this morning. I'm sure you've heard it before. It says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So I've been thinking about that. You know, I, I think about the fact that I have a voice and I, and I do share my voice. I raise my voice. But I also realize that 
um, there's times that we have to be silent. But when I keep going over this quote, I'm saying it's the time now to speak up and to share our voices and use the platform that is before us. I want to talk about that today on this video. So I want to start with number one. I don't want to be with you too long, but I, I have a number one. And number one, which I think is the foundation for everything, especially where my life is concerned, um, is that we must pray. We must pray. Now, here's here's a, a, um, a interesting piece here. I'm not sure that many of us are taking a step back to truly pray about what's going on and taking that step back and praying and seeking a direction as to where to go and how to go and what do we need to pray for. So I, I want to suggest that we avail ourselves to the power of prayer because there is power in prayer if we would collectively pray. I'm not discounting what's going on. I'm, I'm getting to that in my point two and three, but I think it is so important that we start with the power of prayer. Just this morning, it was 1.30 a.m. because I could not sleep. I woke up praying about Colin, about the fact that he took a knee, then all of a sudden he was pushed out of the NFL. Now he's locked out. Nobody will sign him. They say he's very controversial. But then when you look at some of the news feed from Sunday's NFL um, National Anthem Time, there are football players sitting down on the bench. There are football players kneeling. There are football players who are turning their backs. There are football players doing all sorts of things because they're saying they want to stand with Colin. But now I'm going to add something else to this that has been challenging me lately with the whole Colin lockout. And that is, what about the football players that physically abuse people? What about the football players who have beaten their wives or their girlfriends? What about the football players that have um, drugged themselves time and time again and they live off of drugs on and off the field, drugs that are illegal? What about the individuals who are doing things on the field, these football players who are harassing one another in the locker rooms? What about those football players? Where are the penalties? Where are the suspensions for those football players? So here's a man that took a knee. Now he's locked out. He took a knee because of the um, injustice that was going on in the world, and especially right here in the United States of America. We got to think about that. So when I talk about number one, we must pray. We must pray and say, okay, where do we go from here? What does this look like? And really tap into that power of prayer. But I have a second thing I want to talk about. Again, the title today is, How Long Can We Stay Silent? And this is a tweetable for any one of, of you who likes to tweet. Uh, number two, understand we cannot escape politics. No matter how much you want to try to escape politics, we cannot escape politics. Let me give you the, de the definition of politics. The activities associated with the governance of a country or other areas, especially the debate or conflict among individuals or parties having or hoping to achieve, par uh, achieve power. I'll read that again. The activities associated with the governance of a country or other area, especially the debate or conflict among individuals or parties having or hoping to achieve power. Again, tweetable, we cannot escape politics. There are injustices that are taking place that automatically pulls us into a place of politics, whether you want to be in politics or not. Your community is a place of politics. That's called grassroots politics. Your local community is a, po is a political atmosphere, whether you like it or not. It's called local politics. Then we have state politics. Then we have federal politics. We have politics at the school system when you're on the PTA or PTO. We have politics within our, within our sororities and or fraternities. We have politics within our neighborhood association meetings. We cannot escape politics. So whether we talk about it or not, I want to go back to the quote that I shared earlier from Martin Luther King Jr. Our lives begin to end 
the day we become silent about things that matter, which leads me to my number three. It's time for you to determine your platform. And the question today is, what is your platform? What is your platform? Our topic, how long can we be silent? But your, your homework, your challenge that I'm putting before you today is, what is your platform? What does that look like? For example, if you are a writer, maybe you don't want to share your voice uh, uh, vocally, such as myself. But if you are a writer, write letters to your local newspaper. Write letters to the national newspaper, to your local representatives, to your neighborhood association. What change can you be a part of? Start writing if you are a writer. If you are one who like to bring about events together, organize some events. They don't have to be events that are that are that that um, turns into a march. It can be an event where you're you're hosting women for afternoon tea to talk about the safety of our children and how can we have each other's back when our children are getting on and off the buses or in and out of school or at the playground or riding bikes up and down the streets or walking or jumping rope, something that many of us need to go back to. We sit at home now, we're on our electronics day in and day out. What else can we do? How can we share a meal within the community? What's your platform? Is it writing? Is it hosting an event? Is it coming together to talk about some of the issues? Is it an educational piece? You have to determine your platform. My platform is sharing my voice, is raising my voice the way I am doing it now. And that's the difference that we make. So you have to determine your platform. Again, the question for, the, for today, the topic today, how long can we be silent? The quote today is our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And that's a quote of Martin Luther King Jr. Our three points. Number one, we must pray. Avail yourself to the power of prayer. Number two, which is a tweetable. Please, 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 if you love Twitter, please tweet this. And hashtag politically savvy. Understand we cannot escape politics. That's the tweetable. Understand we cannot escape politics. Everything's political. Injustices are political. And the definition of politics, which is the activities associated with the governance of a country or other area, especially the debate or conflict among individuals or parties, having or hoping to achieve po to, to achieve power. You see the connection right there? And then number three, determine your platform. What's your platform? Again, if you're a writer, write. Write to the local newspaper. Write to the national newspaper. Write to your local representative. Write to your neighborhood association. Asking yourself this question, what change can I be a part of? If you are an events pe person, host moms of children who are going in and off of the bus or in and out of the school and talk about the safety of your children. It must start somewhere. Um, and then here's my next question. Have you made yourself available to mentor others? Have you made yourself available? Have you shared? Have you sat down to have a conversation on how you can mentor someone else? We always want to focus on the problem. It is now time to look at the solution. Again, I talked about today the eight-year-old boy, the biracial boy. That's a horrific act by teenagers. Something needs to be done about that. We need to educate our children that that's not right. Even having them look at the images to see the damage of that young boy's neck, his life, the scars that's going to be a part of this young man forever. So going back to point one, the power of prayer, we need to pray for that young man. We need to pray that he is not scarred for life. We have to pray that he will not go and harm himself. We have to pray for his parents. We also have to pray for the teens who did this horrific act. We must pray. We must pray. Then I talked about the NFL blackout, the boycott. Here's a man who took a knee. Colin took a knee 
because of the injustices that was going on throughout the United States of America. He is now locked out of the NFL. But yet and still, we have football players who are abusing their spouse, who are abusing their girlfriends, who are doing drugs, who have been arrested for all kinds of things. But the same rules do not apply. And here's a man who said, I'm just going to silently raise my voice by taking a knee. How long can we be silent? Please, if you want to hear more content like this, go to my blog, which is www.gaildudley, that's G-A-I-L-D-U-D-L-E-Y dot wordpress dot com. You can also find more articles and blogs such as this at readypublication.com, and that's www.readypublication.com. Today's hashtag is politically savvy. The tweetable, we cannot escape politics. If you want to email me, you can email me at gail, that's G-A-I-L, uh, gail at the table with gail.com. So that's gail, G-A-I-L, at the at sign, the table with gail.com. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you wrestle through the questions that I placed before you today. I will have my blog up on WordPress later on this afternoon. Please come there and share this conversation. Please follow this YouTube that will be posted, and that is uh, Gail Dudley as well, and here live on At The Table with Gail on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram, that's at Gail Dudley, and then Twitter, at Gail Dudley. The other Twitter handle is at Ready Pub. That's R-E-A-D-Y Pub. Hope to see you soon. Let me hear from you. Put comments here. Let me know your thoughts. This is the kind of content that we're going to deal with. Even as we are being entrepreneurs, small business development owners, um, nonprofit community executive board members, it's time for us to share our voices. If we remain silent, that will begin to end what really matters because we're making a choice not to stand. You be blessed. Have a great day. Again, I am Gail Dudley. Thank you for joining at the table with Gail. Today's hashtag, hashtag politically savvy. Today's tweetable, we cannot escape politics. Peace out.